Welcome to 3D.sk, human photo reference for 3D artists and game developers. On this site you can find thousands of images, from studio photo reference, to street photo reference. We also have a selection of animals on our site. We have some costumes, we have weapons, armor. We also have 3D scans of bodies and heads, clothing, animals, all the aforementioned above, and 3D maps and textures. So in this tutorial, we're going to be carrying on from the last one, but as you can see, I've deleted this one that we did in the last episode, as that was just a tutorial for you. I don't expect you to follow exactly what I'm doing, but just make some hair cards that you can play around with and get better by yourself, because it takes practice to get it looking good. So I'm going to be speeding it up at each hair card, and you'll probably get the idea of what each one does, or I'll explain at the end. So here we go. So I'm just going to pop back for a sec after I've done the basic one, but there is one little tool that I forgot to mention. There's you you use select rectangle and use control shift, you can select individual parts of this. So what I can do here is I can go to this, and I can go B pinch I, and I can kind of do this if I want. Maybe I want this to kind of sway a little bit. And if you go back, you're going to see that it separates it out a little bit. Maybe go to this one, move this one a little bit in, maybe pinch it in a little bit so it clumps. And you can kind of get some clumping effect going on. Maybe I want one bit in the center, kind of pinch as well, and clump. Generally that's what hairs do when they get to the end. And I can pinch this all together. very small bit here. Maybe I can kind of do this, kind of unclump them a little bit. And that's just going to give us a little bit less of a straight hair, like this effect, which looks quite nice and natural. You can even do some more edits up here, such as maybe there's a little pinch here, and maybe we want some depth. So we move the hair a little bit up above the others. Maybe not the pinch so much. Or we just move it up a little bit. Get it again. Move it up a little bit. Give it some depth. Maybe we can go back and kind of move it over a little bit. I actually don't like the movement I did, but I like the depth. You can kind of see it just gives it that little bit of variation that we're kind of looking for in hair. Get these hairs kind of moving a bit more random, you know, and add some depth to them rather than just flat. Of course, you could argue that you add the depth later when you're placing the hair cards, but some depth could help out. I want to kind of do this with this one. Let's move it out a little bit. And now if you look at the hair, it's going to be a lot more random. If you look closely at it, you can see a bit more kind of overlapping. 
and a little bit more randomness. Of course, if you don't like it, you can always go back. But I'm just showing you the capabilities of that tool. So I'm going to go back a few steps before I started making too many edits, and I'm going to carry on with the speed sculpt from here. So now I'm back and you can see that I've done that little kind of lesser version of what I showed you. I went a bit intense on the version that I showed you. So now I'm just going to do a simple one. So be right back. Okay, so now I'm back after doing some hair strands. Now these aren't perfect in any way, but they'll do for this tutorial. So I'll just go over the strands that I've done very quickly and sh tell you what they're each for. So you can see them rendered now. Now the main purpose is just to have some variation so you're not using the same hair over and over again. Starting from the left, this is like a kind of more guided loose hair that's kind of like over the eye a little bit or maybe over the ears a little bit more of a guided one this one is loose hairs that you can put basically anywhere change the length of it and just kind of have it there as like split ends kind of and loose hairs the next one is a big strand that's got some variation in it which is mainly going to be used for the base of the head, maybe. The next one is more of a directional one. This is what we're also, the two here are the two main ones that we're going to be using. This one's for some variation wherever you want it, some like overlapping to make some depth. The next one is kind of the same idea, except a bit less overlapping and just kind of more clumps of hair. And then the last one is quite a long strand that's going to be used every most likely at the back to kind of create some 
kind of back hairs maybe. Just these last three are just variations on the first one or the third one, fourth maybe. So now we can export it and I'm going to quickly show you how to do that before we end the video. Let me just save this out. So what we need to be able to do that is we need to go to new document, press no, turn this off, type in 1496 by 1496, actually let's go with 2048, you can go with however big you like but I'm going to go with 2048 by 2048. Now press resize. Now what we can do is we can draw out our hair that we've just done, make sure it's facing the front. You go to document and zoom out and then you press F twice to center it. Now it's going to be in the exact same place as the UV, which is what we want. So what I'm going to do now is do a quick render. Obviously, you have to get rid of the back plate, the UV plate. Do a quick render. This one shouldn't take too long. So you can see the result that it gives us. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to render. Then I go to CPR render pass, go to shaded, go to texture test, let's save that out as DPR render. Save this out as our mask. Now I can save this out again. And let's name it 8. And we can jump over to 3ds Max. Now that we're in 3ds Max, we can go to Hair Creation 06. And you can have a look at how the maps look in here. Render that out. So you can see that we've got our maps in here now. Now, one thing is, if you don't like the color, we can go back into this. Let's just go new document. Well, one thing you can also do before you do that is you can change the lighting to better favor. So let's say hair is usually lit from the top. If I do another render, it's going to kind of change the hair quite significantly. Significantly? Never mind. So now if I go back here, go to shaded, texture test, render, or do this, and mask, we can get a rough idea of what it's going to look like. So if I just go to rendering, render setup. Make sure that it's rendering in HD so we get the same resolution. HD video. Give that a render. There's some real black stuff going on in the background, and that might be because we need to actually go here. We need to go to BPR Shadow wherever it is, render properties and turn shadows off, give it another render, okay now that we've got that it should look a lot better when we render it out, so if I go back to GPR render pass and now I go on shaded you're going to notice that it looks a little bit different, or at least it should.
save the mascot. We actually need to save this as a BMP, my bad. So it's now it's updated and you can see that it looks a lot better now. A lot more what you wanted it to look like. And then you can also add the shadow maps. So if I go back and go to render, and this time I get my shadow back. Render properties, let's render shadows now. Do another BPR render. Obviously we can go back in later and we can make this much higher quality, change the lighting a little bit, but this is just so we can start placing the hairs and get on with it, if you know what I mean. So now that we've got the shadows rendered, we can go in and we can go shadow. And we can save this as our shadow map. We can also do the same with the depth. And we can save this out once again. And we can jump back into 3ds Max after closing this down because we don't need it any longer. We can come in here and we can have a look at our map again. So basically what you all you need to do is put a diffuse and an opacity. As you can see here and that should be that done. Now I can go to my color and we can try this out see how it looks when we go to actually that might not look so great turn that off back to a level Let's go back to texture test. Let's just give this a little go. Unsupported image file. Alright, so we'd have to change that to BMP. But most likely with the shadow, it'd be more kind of doing it in Photoshop. And it'd be more for Unreal's case. We'll be back going back and reusing that ZBrush file to recreate our textures a lot more high quality, hopefully. But this should do for the sole purpose of just placing these on the head. So that's what we'll be doing in the next tutorial. We'll be using these hairs and placing them on the head in reference to the Jeff Bridges Photoshop kind of collage that I have. And we'll be doing that. So I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks. Bye. Welcome to the end of this tutorial. Feel free to comment with feedback and suggestions below. And also comment on what you would like to see in future videos. Thanks and goodbye. Mm -hmm.